Hello everyone, Jarrell from Sungrand here with Breath of Thunder. This is the RPG I'm currently running a Kickstarter for. Today I'm going to show you the process of how I direct an NPC or any character really to walk around and also how to control their dialogue instruction. Now I'm using a framework which I built called uh, the Eventide Framework and it uses this sort of event system that has events that are stored in uh, these objects here. So this allows me to create generic events for a number of different dialogues. Uh, these are one, two, three, four, five, uh, or I can have very specific events that have significantly more instructions. Uh, for example, events are controlled by event steps. And in a single event step, I put a label up there just so when I close them all, I can see what the event does. In there, there's this is just it's too much to look at, it's too much to explain. But you can have value requirements that require certain things, so you can have um, different branches of events if you turn on a value requirement, like a, a you know, a, oh, if you have a, an item, you know, or, or a certain value, like how many times have you stepped on flowers? You know, if you step on flowers 50 times, you can have different branches and things like that. You can trigger battles, bring up multiple choice options. You can have uh, very specific um, uh, animations, but you have your text there. Uh, you can have a party member speak or an NPC speak. Uh, you have, uh, if you want it to respond to a certain character in your party, you can have movement instructions which tell actors to move to certain spots. Again, this might be a little too much to look at. It's just very complex and complicated. Uh, but this system allows me to make absolutely any kind of RPG uh, that I want, you know, and it took a while to build this. You have gestures as well. You can have them turn to face certain objects. Uh, you have gestures. You can tell them to perform, oops, um, different gestures and whatnot. You can change their stances, uh, you know, like a pose, like a crouching, crawling. Uh, you can have different uh, character join requests, pets, summons. Uh, you can modify the party with uh, party modification instructions, uh, you know, Okay, uh, you can modify your game switches if you, you know, your flags true or false. You uh, can uh, have your item instruction if you want to add items to the inventory, all sorts of different things here. So uh, it's quite a powerful system. It can do absolutely everything when it comes to this style of game. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rely on my generic um, events. Now, all of these events are hard coded uh, into uh, the game, you can see they're created there, and then you hand that over to an NPC. I have generic events here where the, the structure is always the same, it's universal, uh, and the data inside of them is just uh, ignored and overwritten uh, in real time. So I don't have to create a ton of the exact same event, I can reuse those. So with this NPC here, we are going to use dialogue times four. I've already started writing this, you know, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. So I already started writing that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm from beginning to apply for shadow guardian job. So like, uh, make sure I'm as strong as possible. No. I'm a night owl. The shadow guardian is a perfect job. Oop. So I need to just uh, program some slight modification for this display here in the inspector. Uh, it currently doesn't give me enough space, so I just need to put like a line of code in there to modify it to show uh, the next line down. Um, and there we go. From the Wyvern clan, aren't you? Can you Okay, so we have our dialogue written. Uh, next, we want to direct this character's movement. So this it only uh, determines what the character says in terms of movement that is governed by a totally different script here. If you're interested to see 
what that looks like in programming. It's a lot. It's too much to look at. I'll bring it up there. Uh, here we go. It's that's just stores the data on um, what you want the characters to say. You know, um, that, those sort of events. You have uh, move actor between positions. It's this behavior is governed. This is just a set of instructions. It's not the performance logic. There's always performance logic and um, you know where where that data is actually stored those scripts have to work together okay so we want to move the actor between different positions i'm going to start out with one now i have my thing structured in here as a target i'm just going to duplicate that just to save myself a bit of time i'm going to title this walk target eight now we press F, that zooms in there, that brings me on over to there. So I want a couple of points just so this character can move um, smoothly between these points. So I'm going to start it here. Let's see, like that. Okay, walk target eight. Uh, let's see. And I think it'd be funny if this, this character moved really fast. Okay, uh, we'll go there. Uh, and then we'll go over here so that's four points all right click on our character press f go back to our npc template walk speed most of the npcs walk at six running is uh, at four at six so i think seven would be pretty funny um because that's going to be pretty fast so if you click on that i'm just going to type in target and then eight will show up at the bottom because it's the newest one i designate a speed and i'm actually not going to let this guy stop if i wanted i could add another step this is governed uh, by instructions called movement step. So if I press two and we have a look there, then I can actually say, oh, I want him to perform a gesture. Then you just select the gesture ID. And then at that point, oops, at that point, you would have to uh, determine uh, an auto progress uh, after time so that it would automatically move to the next step. But I won't be doing that. I will just go here like this. So we can go straight to four. We have four points, don't we? So two. And actually what's important here is by default, these set of instructions also have something called allowed to run that prevents the character from ent entering the running state. So we're going to click allowed to run here. And then another important adjust I need to make is with movement behavior. You can either loop that so it goes back to the first instruction or you can go to reverse and it will reverse the instruction. And now it's important uh, when we look at our Eventide Interactable, Eventide again is the name of my RPG framework, is um, ask the actor to stop moving. So what this inst uh, instruction does is this script looks for this one. If this exists with the actor and then when you uh, trigger that event, which is the event condition, uh, that one there and of course if you wanted if you wanted them to only talk once then you would say required you know and i would say talked to running guy you know and then at that point you know uh you would say override switch name there we go and then that would uh check to see if you've done that once you talk to him it will trigger that event you know all sorts of things and then after that you can actually have a second uh condition you know and so if you went like that and put a tick mark on there, then you can say that this one runs if that's active and that one runs if that's false. You know, we don't really need that right now. So I will go ahead and run the game now. And we should see this logic working uh, unless I put some instruction in there and it's wrong, then we should ha have this run and we'll have a look and see what happens when we talk to this guy. All right, so we have our party here. And again, this game is Breath of Thunder. If you'd like to see this game made, then please feel free to contribute to the uh, Patreon. Whoa, where is that? Uh oh, where's that guy? That guy went running off somewhere. I think I must have designated something incorrectly here. So let me go ahead and see. I saw him running there for a second. Okay, we have walk target eight. Let me just double check where that is. Walk target eight is there. Eight, one, two, and a three. Oh, I think I know what I've done. Uh, there is an issue with his turn speed. <laughs> that was a test earlier. Uh, let's go ahead and put turn speed at four. This guy's going to turn on a dime. Okay, and it should be working properly now. Let's go ahead and walk over to our new friend. Okay, where is he? Come on, fella. Where are you? He 
should be running back and whoa <laughs> he's pretty fast okay that has that has the physical comedy that i'm looking for okay so i need to enable gravity you can see by default i don't have gravity turned on for the npcs uh just as a performance consideration uh, but we're bringing this to, to consoles where that's not so much. So now if he walks under something, that's kind of like the glitches that you see, say, for example, in the Pokemon, you know, um, Shining Shining Diamond and Brilliant Pearl. You kind of saw those similar glitches. Um, so I'll go ahead and enable um, gravity simulation for this guy. <laughs> All right, that's pretty funny. It's because he ran up on the rock and he uh, sort of... Uh, so I'm just gonna actually going to prevent that from happening for now. Just for now, we're going to go ahead and, and just put that back there because I want to talk to this guy and make sure he's going to function properly. Let's go ahead and increase his turn speed so he turns on a dime. I just thought it would be very funny. Um, that would be sort of a visual um, bit of humor to just see this guy and he's just speeding back and forth. Just hilarious. Um, I think it's pretty funny to see that, you know, because because for a frame of reference, you know, everyone's moving at this leisurely pace and uh, it is the player that's the fast one. So to see this guy and he's just, um, you know, basically the flash over here, I think I thought that was um, just a pretty funny visual gag. So I'm going to try to talk to him. As you do, you always try to catch these NPCs in games, right? When you see a guy running, uh, you just want to catch the NPC and talk to him. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, baby. Ooh, it feels so good to train. Uh, yes. Okay. All right, so all of our dialogue works as expected, and then once we're done talking to him, he resumes his script logic. Now I see a little bit of hiccuping um, as he approaches his um, designated checkpoint, so I'm going to go ahead and look into the logic for that and see if I can just smoothen that out a little. You cannot catch this guy. <laughs> all right, and then that's it for today. So that is um, the system I use to control the events, uh, I can give instructions to the characters for the uh, dialogue and the movement. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found that interesting. I really love RPGs. They're my favorite genre. So I, I really enjoy seeing this kind of thing, the way developers put this all together. Okay, thanks very much, everyone. Take care, and I'll check in again soon. Uh, enjoy your games. And uh, again, if you want to see this game made, I'll put the link to the Kickstarter at the uh, in the description and the comments, and it would be a huge help if you just shared that Kickstarter around so we could reach our stretch goals. Take care, everyone.